lot of times I show things that maybe you should or should not do, okay, or push things to the limit or, or put myself in a predicament and see if the tractor can kind of dig its way out. Well, today, I'm just gonna show you how something just works, right? And this is how I would normally push some snow. We don't have a huge snowfall today, three, four inches on the ground, nothing crazy, but that's what I'm gonna get out there and plow. If you hire a snow plow service, they're gonna come out and oftentimes plow when there's two inches of snow on the ground, okay? You wanna stay on top of it, and that's the idea. Don't let it get too deep, don't let it freeze up, don't let it get packed down and, and make a hard mess, and that's what we're doing today. Now, I did just get this HLA 2500, 96 inch or eight foot wide snow pusher put on my Kubota. We have it outfitted with UHMW skid runners, UHMW on the main edge, on the back drag too. Using this for the concrete surface, for the asphalt surface, the surfaces that you don't want to damage with a steel edge. So first thing we had to do was adjust the skid runners a little bit because we want our main cutting edge to be perfectly level with the skid runner. So everything's making contact and sliding across the ground at the same height. That way it scrapes the best. And that's what we set up first, really easy to do. After that, realize had a dead battery. So make sure you don't forget to turn your lights off, otherwise it could kill your battery too. After that, we wound up putting on the hitch hangers, okay? I needed to add a lot of ballast weight. I already had my Versa bracket back here. Just had a bunch of suitcase weights brought over uh, from the shop and uh, added on the hitch hangers, okay? So you need a lot of ballast weight to get traction, to be able to push snow. Obviously, it's great for other things too. Counterweight, when you're lifting up something heavy on your front end loader, keeps your rear end planted to the ground. Just adds efficiency and safety all around. So. We have six 41 pound suitcase weights on the hitch hangers, plus another eight 70 pound suitcase weights on the Versa bracket. We have liquid ballast in our tires too. So we have a lot of ballast weight here and we're set up well to push snow. Now, ever since I bought this tractor, I've had a slow leak in this front right tire and we had to add some air to that. It just keeps, well, it's at the right PSI now, but it's still kind of squishy. It looks like it's, it's low all the time, even though it's not. So I don't know what's going on with that. It must be fine. It's, it's where it's supposed to be, but uh, somebody smarter than me can, can maybe fill me in on if that's okay or not. Now, seldom is something perfectly consistent, and that's what we have out here. And the main thing I wanna push off today are gonna be those, again, concrete and asphalt surfaces, but I'm starting on, on just regular ground. Right next to it, that's kind of undulating and, and not perfectly level, and so when you drop down the pusher, could be a plow, could be a snowblower, it's gonna not wanna sit perfectly level all the time. Or when I get to the far side of the concrete and then get back onto stone and grass and there's hills and everything else involved, you kinda gotta constantly work that front end loader so you're not scraping into the ground. And throttle control is your friend. And this is not a hydrostatic machine, this is a gear drive machine. And I'm in low range, I am in the highest gear, in sixth gear, but I have the throttle all the way down. And I can control that speed to a certain extent with the foot throttle, just pushing that down to go a little bit faster and, and backing off to go a little bit slower. And so that's what I'll do, uh, especially once I get off of the concrete and know I'm gonna have to really work that loader joystick to keep my pusher above the ground and not just dig in and scrape a bunch of gravel or a bunch of sod or anything else. I'll tell you though, it's really nice having the right size tool for the job. We show a lot of small tractors on this channel and more power to you. I mean, that's why I show a lot of those tractors because that's kind of in the wheelhouse of the channel, but it's nice to have a big piece of equipment and I can show just the Kubota, just the skid steer doing a lot of these jobs all the time and get them done really quick. And it was only four or five passes. What was it, Chris? Yeah, four passes, I think it was out here to clear off this whole parking pad, which is, that's a pretty satisfying feeling to get the job done quickly. Head on over to the driveway and uh, did a pass up and down. You know, I've got that, that circle driveway area, which is a real tricky spot there, but um, first time using this pusher on there, I, it, it did okay. I did three, three circles around there and, and kind of pushed it off and, and did just fine there too. But really, no big snafus today other than that battery, which we got that back up and running in no time flat. It just, this is how life is supposed to go. It's just supposed to be nice and easy and it was almost done too quickly. I'm hoping it snows more so I can get back out there again, but when you can get a job done so efficiently as this, it just makes it satisfying. So folks, this is a good example of just staying on top of it, right? Nothing crazy, no gigantic snowstorm. Just staying on top of it while you have the opportunity to do so before it gets out of control or you have a slip and fall accident out there because it's too slick or maybe your car is on, it's on a hill, icy hill, and you can't get up and down it or the mailman can or the UPS guy can't. It just prevents all those kinds of problems and that's where the versatility of the pusher comes into play because you can see it will still load up with a big pile of snow even if you have just a few inches. It's gonna move it out of the way whether it's a couple inches on the ground or a foot and a half on the ground. It's a great tool, good for that wet, heavy snow, light, fluffy stuff. 
And guess what? We sell and ship these things all over the country just about every day of the week. Sure we have one to fit your machine, check us out at GoodWorksTractors.com. But I don't want to forget, if you get something on the front end loader, like a snow pusher, a grapple, set of pallet forks, make sure you're set up properly on the backside too with that ballast weight that you need, versa bracket bundle, hitch hanger bundle, get liquid ballast in your tires with rim guard, set yourself up for success. Now if you enjoyed today's video, you want to see what else is going on around here, make sure you hit subscribe right down below. We'd love to have you tag along. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.